Our God, you are our God. Earnestly we seek you today. Our soul thirsts for you. Our whole being longs for you. Because we have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory, we can respond. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, our Comforter, our Guide, Jesus, our Mediator, our Savior, our Lord, our soon coming King. We have come in your presence on this beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day to worship you in spirit and in truth. We acknowledge your presence, that you are with us. And so, Father, we lift up our voice in praise and thanksgiving, for you are an awesome God. You are the great God of the universe, the Almighty, the Creator, our Redeemer, our Friend, and our soon-coming King. Father, we ask that you accept our worship service today. Bless each and every person that enter these doors and when this service should come to an end, we can say it was good to be in the presence of the Lord. This is our humble prayer we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. At this time, we turn to our formation of faith, which is in Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14. As we recite together, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures on my holy day, and call the Sabbath to the light, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high place of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good all the time. How about we say that God is amazing and awesome, or isn't he? He's been good to us all week, and we are here in his presence. At this time, we are going to ask if there are any guests among us. Could you please stand? We would like to recognize all our guests. Thank you for standing. Amen. Remain standing as I greet you on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Jenks Brudas, the officers, and members of this church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. We want to let you know that you're more than welcome to join this congregation. And if you're living in this area, please make Shiloh your church home. I hope you'll have a good Sabbath day and you'll enjoy your services and that you will be blessed. Thank you and you may be seated. I'd like to mention a few of our announcements. The first one is that our board will reconvene next week, Sunday at 10 a.m. So all board members, please be here and please be on time. If you have an agenda item, please turn them in to the clerk's office no later than Tuesday of next week. Uh, the Family Life Department will be hosting a baby shower this evening at sunset and we are asking all our ladies and men to please come out and support and this is for a uh, baby girl so bring something for a baby girl for one of our church members amen, amen. There, we are. there will be a deacon and deaconess meeting this evening immediately after bible studies so all deacons and deaconesses please meet this evening immediately after Bible studies. There will be a women's ministries meeting next Wednesday, Wednesday, September 12th at 6 p.m. All women are invited to be a part of that. And there'll be a Sabbath school meeting, council meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Oh, excuse me? At 10 a.m. So there's a Sabbath School Council meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Let us remember to pray for those who are sick and shut in in our congregation. And at this time, I would like to leave you with a thought for the week. When God sees you doing your part, developing what he has given you, then he will do his part and open doors for you. Have a happy Sabbath and God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Oh, let's try that one more time. Good morning, everyone. Are you excited to be here? All right, if you're really excited, let us all stand and let us greet one another in Christ.
once again, good morning and happy Sabbath. All right, I, I, I know sometimes it, it takes a while for us to get going, so we're going to try one more time. Now, if you're, put it, I, I, I put it this way, if you're really excited that you are alive today, so I want you to respond, I want them to hear you at Gillette Stadium. Are you guys ready? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There you go. Really excited to be here. Just not to, um, we're not going to take too long with this. I just wanted to remind you that today is the beginning of our 40 days of fasting and prayer. Now, how many of you have gotten your prayer partner? All right, good. So we're going to stop praying today. If you have not gotten your prayer partner, start today. Uh, the book that we want to begin with first is How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. You can download that off online. Once again, if you have a problem downloading it, please see somebody who can, and we will make sure to get that, uh, we will make sure to get that to you. Again, the name of the book is, what's the name of the book? How to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Please read that together. Uh, today, we're, again, is the beginning. Tomorrow, this is how we're going to do it. So tomorrow, every person's name beginning with the letter, or well, the last name beginning with the letter A, will be fasting tomorrow. All right? Is that okay? And then on Monday... Every person's name beginning with the letter B will be fasting then. Now, usually when you talk about fasting, we usually fast from what? From, from food, right? So if you have issues or anything of that nature, please don't kill yourself. Please do not do that, all right? Some people can only fast for half a day. But whatever you choose, please be consistent with that. So if you choose 6 to 9, that's fine. If you choose 9 to 12, that's, that's fine. If you want to do the entire day, that is fine. But whatever you do, be consistent in doing that. Let us pray. We're praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we're praying that God would bring a change about in our community here also in Springfield. I believe that God is going to do some amazing things. What about you? There, there's a verse that I was thinking about when coming here, Exodus 14, 12, that says, uh, And ye shall hold your peace, for God shall fight for you. Now, either you're fighting and you have no peace, or God is fighting for you and you have peace. Now, I don't know about you, but I want the latter. What about you? All right, so please don't forget that. Now, again, we had said before that we, were going to, that we were going to ask folks during these 40 days to fast from watching TV. But when we said that, you know, we got, uh, well, Pastor, man, <laughs> your empire's on. <laughs> so this is what we're going to ask. See, I'm fair. So this is what, those of you that can do that, we're going to ask that you do that. Those of you who feel as if that's too much, on the day you're supposed to fast, please refrain from watching. Is that okay? Is that better? All right. Some folks are like, <laughs> good pastor, yes. All right, so um, please, let's not remember, God does great things during 40 days in fasting and prayer. And I want you to know, my friends, that the power is not so much in the, in, 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 in the programs that we're doing. The power is in God himself. But I believe, that, I believe that when God's people come together to pray, great things happen. And I believe that great things will happen for the city of Springfield as a result of God's people coming together. All right, so tomorrow the letter A will do what? The letter A will be, so if you have any family outings, go to the family outings, be friendly.
also, also, I just wanted to share this. I just wanted to share this with you. You know, a lot of times we see a lot of things happening in our world, and people get all, people get all tight. You know, like man, this is happening, and and folks get scared. But I want you to know that there's still a God who sits on the throne, and we don't have to be afraid of what everybody. That's right. We don't have to be afraid. God is looking after us. The Bible says, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the entire earth. And what is he doing? To show himself strong. Didn't say to show yourself strong. God is looking for opportunities to show himself strong on your behalf. And so we want to encourage you to keep looking to him, to keep trusting, to keep hoping, and believe that God will come through. Now, I am so excited, and it is such an honor for us here today to have with us some, uh, uh, some honored guests who are here. And I want to share with you some of my honored guests, my friends, my, my newfound brothers, and they are here today, and they want to just say hi to the congregation. Uh, I know that Sam is here. He's in the back. If you can just, all right. Um, please don't kill me with this one. Um, um, Amari? Amory. Amory. Sorry about that, my brother. Okay, Amory is back. He's back there. Um, then we have brother, Gonz um, brother no, no, Nigel, who's with us. All right. There you go, Brother Nigel. And then we have our brother Jay Gonzalez. He is the, um, he is the Democratic um, candidate for governor. And he wants to come and just share a few words with us uh, to Shiloh. And I want you to know that this is your family. And we invite you to come up now. Thank you, Pastor. Happy Sabbath, Shiloh. I am so grateful and humbled to be here with you today in your place of worship and your place of community. I want to just say a couple words about community. Community can be a place that's nothing more than a place where we just coexist. Or Community can be a place where we support each other and we nourish each other and we connect with each other. A place where we see each other and hear each other and see ourselves in one another. I am running for governor because I care about people and I want to make a difference in people's lives. And I see government as a tool for our broadest community for all of us. I love the way Governor Patrick used to describe government. He used to say, government is us. I believe government is our instrument, not our enemy. It's the vehicle through which we empower each other and support each other and protect each other. I don't think it's good enough for government to be satisfied with our just coexisting. I don't think it's, gov it's good enough for government to simply accept the world the way it exists and try to manage it better. I believe we need a governor who's going to see the way the world should be and take us to that place. Let's aim high. Let's take on the big challenges holding regular people back, not just in Boston, but in Springfield too. Let's stand up for every single person. Let's see our differences as strengths and recognize that beneath those differences are many more similarities. And let's work together to build stronger communities, to see each other and hear each other and see ourselves in one another. I want to thank you again for the opportunity to be here with you today. I really appreciate the chance to be a part of this strong and special community. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. The 
this morning we are honored to have a baby for a dedication. At this time we are going to ask the parents and um, other family members to come forward. And the baby for our dedication today is Levon Lennox Langley. And his parents are Lennox Langley and Sandre Adre Langley. And um, this couple has been coming to our church for some time. And I'm sure very soon they will be members of Shiloh. Amen. It's always a privilege to dedicate a child to the Lord. You know, we could always, we could be doing so many other things, but it's one of the highest privileges in my opinion when we can, when we can come together, not as one, not as a, a community, but as one. When every one of us come together like this, just for one person. You know, it's amazing what a baby can do. A baby can bring folks out like none other. I mean, I'm always amazed if it, you know, when we do baby dedications. I mean, the place is packed. Uh, and so all because of this beautiful child, this precious gift that God has given to you. And the Bible says, suffer not the little children to come to me. Jesus loved children. And so right now we're going to sing we're going to sing our, our song, Jesus Loves the Little Children, and then um, we're going to offer a word of prayer. If you don't mind, we're going to ask the congregation to please stand with us as we pray. And I'm going to ask if Elder Webley can go and... There you go. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Our loving Father, we want to thank you so much for this blessed privilege this privilege of standing before your precious throne. It is so good to know that before the foundation of the world, he was not an afterthought, but that you knew him in his mother's womb. You have a purpose for his life. And so, Father, as we dedicate him to you, we ask that you would we ask, Father, that you would fulfill that purpose in his life. Thank you so much for the parents who are here today. And, Father, we pray that you would give them wisdom, that they may train and raise him to the, uh, that he may grow up and honor you in his life. Thank you for the grandparents who are here. Thank you, Father, for the friends and family members who are here. And Father, we pray that you continue to bless this family in a very special way. And while we are here for this precious joy, this, this precious child, but Father, it takes 
It takes a village to raise a child. And so, Father, each and every single one of them, we ask that your, very ho your, that your Holy Spirit will be their guide. And Father, as a church family, may you put it in our hearts day after day to say a prayer for this beautiful family. And when Jesus comes, we ask that every member, every person in this family, every member here at Shiloh will be in that number. In Jesus' name, amen. We just wanted to give you a little gift for, this, is, this book is called Child Guidance, and it is a precious book that will teach you, that will be a, an encouragement and inspiration in terms of how to raise this precious gem. And we have another uh, gift for you as well, too. That is the certificate. May God bless you, and we are so delighted to have him here with us today. We are almost through with this. I just want to acknowledge um, my good friend, um, Elder Johnny Lane. He's here with his wife. Uh, he had already stood up when um, he, they were asked to, to stand. Uh, Johnny and I actually grew up together. And um, I, I, although to this day he denies it, but um, he, I remember him when we were kids, he you know, threw a racket at my head, but you know, he. <laughs> He denies it till this day. I, I call it spiritual amnesia. <laughs> and so, um, but it's so good to have him here. I hadn't seen him in a long time, him and his beautiful wife, and it's good to have him here with us today. Oh, and last but um, before Elder Webley comes up, he has a special announcement for you. I just want to say thank you so much, my wife and I, for the honor of serving you for a year. I just want to say thank you. It has been, it has been, it has been, it has been our, our highest privilege. And I want you to know that from the sincerity of my heart that I love each and every one of you. And I know that although I know, I, I, you know, I'm still trying to, the transition, trying back and forth, but I want you to know that it pains me every time to have to leave here to go to New York and then to come back. Uh, you talk to my wife every time, she's like, I'm like, honey, we don't have to go this time, right? I mean, can you call in sick or do something? I mean, 
But um, it really is good to be able to be here. You guys are amazing. And I just wanted to let each and every one of you know that. Amen. I just wanted to bring to your attention again our spiritual gifts database. Um, I did announce it last week, but nobody, I, well, one person decided to complete it. What's going on? No, I really do want to know. I, I, I want to see if I can help. You forgot. Okay. So I guess maybe I have to throw it across Facebook so that those of you are on it. But what we really want, here is what is going on. We don't have an inventory of the gifts and special abilities of all the members in this church. And when you really look at the leadership of our church, it's just a fraction of the talents and the gifts that we have in our church. We want everybody in our church to contribute to the ministries of the church. And in order to do that effectively, we need to know what it is that you're good at. Right? We want to know what your gifts are because we don't know all of them. And so we, uh, we have paid for a service to collect this information so that you can put in, it will ask you very specific questions. This takes about 15 minutes to do online. And if you don't have a computer, we actually have paper copies that you can get from the clerk's office so that you can complete this. Uh, I have my computer today. And after lunch, I will be around. And for those of you who don't have a computer at home or don't have a smartphone, you can literally come and I will help you to do this. Our goal is to have a strong enough database of individuals. So at the time when we start our nominating committee next two weeks, we will actually have information to go on so that we're not just randomly saying, Oh, because I know this person, this person should hold this office. But we're actually having people who are qualified to hold those offices so that we can be more efficient. I'm not saying that if somebody doesn't have qualification for a church office that they can't do a good job. What I'm saying is that if you're actually qualified, if you actually have experience in that office, you're going to do a better job of it, right? And so we can identify these and we can help people to grow their talent so that God can bless you. Again, last week I mentioned to you that for our 28 fundamental beliefs as Seventh-day Adventists, belief number what is on spiritual gifts? Do you remember? Number 17. Belief number 17 is spiritual gifts and ministry. And it says, God bestows upon all members of his church in every age spiritual gifts which each member is to employ in loving ministry for the common good of the church and of humanity given by the agency of the Holy Spirit, who apportions to each member as he wills, the gifts provide all abilities and ministries needed by the church to fulfill its divinely ordained functions. According to the scriptures, these gifts include such ministries as faith, healing, prophecy, proclamation, teaching, administration, reconciliation, compassion, and self-sacrificing service, and charity for the help and encouragement of people. Some members are called of God and empowered by the Holy Spirit for functions recognized by the church in pastoral, evangelistic, apostolic, uh, teaching ministries particularly needed to equip the members for service, to build up the church to spiritual maturity, and to foster unity of the faith and knowledge of God. And here's the part I don't want you to forget. When members employ these spiritual gifts as faithful stewards of God's varied grace, the church is protected from the destructive influence of false doctrine, grows with a growth that is from God and is built up in love and faith. Amen? The city of Springfield and its surroundings need us. They need us to go out and do what God has asked us to do. There is enough pain and suffering in our community, and what God has called us to do is to help to alleviate that. Let us maximize our ministry so that we can do that effectively. Amen? God bless you today as you worship.
the children are lifting their offering, this offering will be in aid of our church school, Saja. Children, you may come back now. Okay, so so um, today, Brianna and I are going to be doing this story, and um, we entitled this story "The Wordless Book." Mm -hmm. And so, in my hand, I have a book, and so as I flip through the pages, you notice there are no words there. So we're going to be telling the gospel of Jesus through colors today, all right? Now, as I turn to the first page, the color here is gold. Now, what do gold remind you of? It will remind me of the sun. Sun. It reminds me of the earth. Earth. Oh, great. It reminds me of a lemon. Lemon. It reminds me of golden money. Gold money. Yeah. Wonderful. So, 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 the, uh, the, the gold page of this book remind me, reminds me of heaven. Now, heaven is promised to be a beautiful place. And... The Bible says that there will be no suffering, no death, no sickness, no tears, no pain in heaven, right? Um, a, 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 a verse in uh, Revelation chapter 21 also says 
that there is going to be a street of gold in heaven. All right? So at this time, I'm going to ask the person with uh, number one just to read for me what it says. Who has number one? Revelation 21.4. He will wipe it. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, sadness, crying, or pain. Okay. Thank you. So Jesus loves us so much, and he wants us to live with him in heaven, but there is something that is stopping us from being with Jesus, and so Brianna is going to tell us about that right now. As we turn to the dark page. The dark page represents that something that prevents us from being with God, sin. Sins are the things we do that make God unhappy. Doing, saying, or thinking bad things are sins. Telling lies, disobeying your parents, hurting others, and being selfish are examples of sins. All of us have sinned. The punishment for our sins is that we can't be with God in heaven because of sin, our hearts are no longer clean. God is perfectly, perfectly good and perfectly clean. Because God is perfectly clean, he can only allow those with clean hearts into heaven. On our own, we can't make our hearts clean. But God loves us so much that he provides a way for our hearts to be made clean. Okay. So, uh, the person that has 2A, two, two please read. You? Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. Romans 3, verse 23. Okay. Now, sin is obviously the hindrance that will prevent us from being with God. But Jesus had made a way of escape that we might be clean from sin. And that's what the red page of our book represents. What do you think of when you look at the red page? Blood. Blood. And there's a lot of blood in it. All right. Someone else had their hand up. Who was that? You? Red punch. <laughs> okay. So in the Bible, it tells us that Jesus sheds his blood on Calvary's cross so that sinners might receive cleansing from sin. Okay? So the person with th number three. Romans 5 verse 8. But God shows his great love for us in this way. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Oh, wonderful. So Christ died for us when we were sinners. And because of Christ's death, we can be made pure. And Brianna is going to tell us about that next, just now. As we turn to the clear page of our book. The amazing thing is that our hearts can now be clean, even cleaner than this clean page. But before our hearts can be made clean, we need to admit that we have sinned and ask God to forgive us, believe that Jesus died on the cross to be punished instead of us, and invite Jesus into our lives to help us turn away from sin. When we do these things sincerely, our hearts will be made clean. Okay, so... We are back again to gold, and that's the end of the book. So how the book begins is the way it ends. The Bible begins with the tree of life lost in the Garden of Eden, and it ends with the tree of life restored in the Gospel of Eden, in the book of Revelation. So Brianna is going to pray this prayer for us just now, and we are going to be repeating after Brianna as she says short sentences. Let us go ahead. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I know that I have sinned. I know that I have sinned. 
I have done things that are wrong. I believe that you died on the cross to take the punishment for my sins. Please forgive all of my sins and make my heart clean. Please come into my life and help me turn away from doing wrong. Thank you that with a clean heart I can have a relationship with you now and will one day be with you in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, children. You may go back to your... Oh, you want to read your card? Just, just one moment. She's going to read hers for the... For the clean page. John 1 9. But if he confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. Because when can trust God to do what is right, he will clean us from all wrong things we have done. Okay, thank you so much. Amen. We have one more thing we need to do. Uh, Matthew, Matthew Ward was baptized some time ago and we haven't done the right hand of fellowship. So I know he'd been waiting patiently. When are they gonna do this? So Matthew, we're gonna ask you to come up. Come up front and quickly, quickly, we're gonna, gonna um, do the right hand of fellowship. Welcome him as a member of Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so we're going to ask the members just to come down and just greet him, shake his hand, and we'll go back. We'll continue our service.
our hymn of praise and adoration is 185. Jesus, give all the world to me.
yourself away.
to the front this morning we are going to be tapping into the power of the Lord because he is here with us today and he is prepared to lavish us with his blessings so we are going to be asking the Lord to place his blessing upon us even now so at this time as far as possible, you can kneel with me. As we speak to the Lord in prayer. Our loving, gracious, wonderful God and Father who art in heaven. This Sabbath morning, Lord, we have come once more in your house of worship, knowing that you are here with us. Father, it gives us joy and pleasure to come because we know that we are coming to meet, meet with with the all-powerful God. Oh Lord, you have demonstrated so many times that you have all powers. And we, your feeble children of earth, are recipients of your great powers. And so, dear Father, we come today we come, O oh Lord, to present ourselves to you. We come, O oh Father, to ask of you because you are prepared to grant us your blessings. So, Father, we just want to clear the air by asking you right now to forgive us of the many sins that we have committed because you have said in your word that there is none, no good or none that is good no, not one. 
only the Father in heaven. And so we consider ourselves sinners. We consider ourselves, O oh Lord, unworthy of your many blessings. But because you are an eternal loving God, and you love us with an everlasting love, you still look beyond our faults, our many faults, and grant us your peace, your joy, and your blessings. So, dear Father, we just want to say thank you because your thinking is not the ways of mankind. Your way of doing things is not the way of how humanity would have treated each other when we wrong with each other. Father, we have wronged you so many times, but you still continue to show us love, compassion, patience, and you just bless us when we ask for blessings. So Lord, we don't want to take your blessings for granted. We just want to tell you thanks today for who you are. Father, we thank you to know that you are higher than all mankind. Father, we just want to thank you again because you are worthy to be thanked and to be praised. And so, Lord, we come today with sickness, with pain, with suffering. We come, O oh Lord, in our state of poverty. And we know that you are the God that is full of blessing. And you, O oh Lord, you are just awesome in every way. So we present ourselves to you today as little children. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you may bless us immensely. We pray, O oh God, that you may bless us even in ways that we fail to ask of you. Please, Lord, do not fail to grant us your blessings. Father, there are so many of the brethren who are ill in sickness and pain. So we just want to present to you all these who are suffering and sickness today. In a special way, oh God, we want to present our dear sister Carol Martin. We know not what her complaint is, but we know that you know. And so we present her to you and we ask, oh Father, that you may meet her even right now, wherever she's at. Father, just want to ask you to place your blessings over your church. Father, Sabbath after Sabbath, we come out here to worship you, to praise you. But we also come, oh God, expecting a miracle. We come expecting a blessing at your right hand. And so today, oh God, we ask that you may let today be the day of blessing. We pray, oh God, that you may let today be the day when you would have just placed your spirit in our hearts so that we might live a life that would please you. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the many years that you have been watching over us. We thank you, Father, for the growth and development that you have given unto Shiloh. But we know, O oh God, that you want to take us even to higher heights. And so we come presenting ourselves to you and we are asking you, Lord, that you may use us in ways that might seem impossible to the human eyes and human thinking. Father, may this community and the communities around us might see that Jesus Christ is being worshipped in this place, that Jesus Christ has entered into the hearts of all the worshippers of Shiloh and that people might come to be a part of this great family. Father, as we seek to listen to your word today one more time, we just want to present to you your servant, Pastor Brutus, the one you have chosen and you have blessed with words of blessings, words, beautiful words, wonderful words, words of life. You have given him your spirit and so we ask oh God that as he stands in the pulpit today that he might not stand in his own strength but he might stand in the strength and the might of Jesus Christ 
As he opened his mouth, O oh Lord, we ask that you may place your word therein. And may a wandering heart today receive a message. A message that would have changed us for eternity. A message, O oh Father, that would have made us stronger Christians in this difficult time. A message, O oh Lord, that would have set us on our path rejoicing because you would have spoken to our hearts today. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for answering to us because we pray in the wonderful, precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let all under the hearing of my voice even now say amen and amen thank you jesus Fall mission appeal, mission giving. It is no secret that our giving to missions have fallen off decidedly since the early days of our denomination, and that is a shame. Who of the older ones of us cannot remember the leg legendary stories of our mission pioneers, the Stelz? the heresies, and hundreds of others like them. And what about Picarin Island and other exotic, exotic lands? Many of us still have books on our library shelves that contain stories of their wonderful mission exploits. It is not surprising that a special day of emphasis has been established. It needs emphasizing for sure. It would be well if each of us were to take a renewal look at our own approach to mission giving. Our tithe envelopes actually suggest a percentage of income to de designate for missions. Rather than a dollar or two in the Sabbath school en envelope, a more internal approach would be to set aside a nice offering each month or week and include it along with our tithe and other offerings. We would be re remiss if we failed to honor those other ministries that have stepped into the gap in sending missionaries or sponsoring mission trips. While it is appropriate to support them as well, let's put our mind emphasis on the worldwide work. Today is a good day to start a new beginning with a generous offering for the fall mission appeal. At this time, the deacon is going to wait upon us for the tithes, offering, and our mission offering also. Let's give 
according to how the Lord has blessed you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much that each one of us have a part to play in this ministry to give back that which you have given unto us. Lord, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to give than to receive. And so, Father, we pray even now that as we return our tithes and offerings, we ask that you will bless each one of us, Lord, that we may have that vision to know that when we give, when we give back, it is for the cause of this great work. We are not losing anything, Lord, but we are gaining. And when you give back, you multiply. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You have given us power to receive wealth. And Father, we just pray that you'll accept our tithes and our offerings as we place them in the basket. We ask that you'll multiply it and may it be used to hasten thy soon return. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering. Thank you for giving us the privilege of returning that which is rightfully yours. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. He's my all in 
it all. Listen, when he crushed me down, Jesus picks me up, stands right by me when the going gets tough. I got Jesus, and that's enough. Oh, when I'm sick and in trouble, when I call. to my soul. You can just go on me, turn your back on me. God's got his arm wrapped all around me. Take care of my enemies when they try to get tough. That's enough. Listen, talking about a great emancipator and a heart regulator. Jesus, Jesus is. He'll make your way brighter. Your burden's lighter. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Well, you can just go on me. Turn your back on me. God's got his arm wrapped all around me. Take care of my enemies when they try to get up. And that's enough. Listen, I've got Jesus. And that's enough. I've got Jesus. And that's enough. I got Jesus, and that's enough. He fixed my heart, he fixed my mind. I got Jesus, and that's enough. Oh, Jesus, and that's enough. I can call him in the morning, I can call him in the evening. I got Jesus, I got Jesus, my, my Jesus, my, my Jesus, J. E. S U S J E S U S. Call him in the morning. Call him in a new day. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. I got Jesus and that's enough. Jesus and that's enough. Please stand with me, congregation. Please stand with me. We're now about to explore the word of our living God. Please turn to the book of Ephesians. That's the book of Ephesians. And we will be reading Ephesians chapter 4. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. And we'll be reading responsively. I will begin. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. All together, and be kind of one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Praise the Lord. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated. Thank you.
promised to never leave me alone. And how many of you know that God never leaves? Never leaves us alone. He is always on the lookout for his children. You know, Christianity is the only religion that has God looking for man. Most other ones have man meeting God halfway. That does not work. Or man trying to find God. That does not work. The only kind of religion that works is the one where you have a God coming down all the way to look for us. We certainly serve a mighty God. Let us bow our heads. Thank you so much, choir, for that song. Uh, let us, is Sister Myrtle in, in here? She, all right, she was not feeling too well earlier. She, she's still over there? Okay, we'll keep her, we'll keep praying for her. Father, we thank you so much for reminding us once again that you will never leave us alone. Thank you so much, Father, even in our most trying times, when it appears that darkness surrounds us, when the enemy is trying to tempt us to feel as if we are by ourselves, and here you have it where you just told us that you never leave us alone. Where we often saw two sets of footprints, but in the most trying times of our lives, where there was only one set of footprints, it's because you was carrying us through those difficult times. Thank you, Father, for not giving up on us. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go quickly to Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. We pray that the Holy Ghost will speak to our hearts in a expedient manner by which we'll probably get out of here by 1.30. It is 1.05. It is one, it's too short. Too. I remember C.D. Brooks went over someplace to Africa to preach and I think he preached for about 30 minutes and when he sat down, everybody was complaining. Told him to get right back up. He had to preach another sermon because he preached too short. <laughs> Wish that that was a miracle, boy, I tell you. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, are you ready? Ephesians chapter 4. Now, I heard a story about a man. This man and his wife had been attending a church. They weren't believers but they knew that they wanted to belong to somebody's church. They listened to the pastor preach and he was talking about the man who was, who was um, paralyzed on the cart and his friends, four of them, each took a corner of the cart and led him to Jesus. And at the end of the sermon he said, who will be? that person to carry somebody to come to church to meet with Jesus. And as that man listened, not a member of the church, he walked up to the pastor and he said, Pastor, I want to be one of those young men. But, but I, have a, I, I have this thing that I need you to understand. While I want to offer my services, I want to help. But don't ever call me up front to read the Bible. Don't ever make me pray out loud. He says, if you do, this will be the last time I will come to this church. The pastor agreed and said, okay. And he said, all right, pastor, I will be one of the ones who carries somebody to church so that they can meet with Jesus. The guy left the church and he kept asking himself, what can I do? Jesus, how can I be used to be a soul winner for you? And so he had an idea. He went down to the store and bought himself a basketball. And then he went and found a young person that lived on his block. 
and he said, I want you to write down the names of your friends on this ball that want to come to church with you and I will arrange for them to come to church. And so the young man left and he went and spoke to his friends and, and a lot of names on the basketball and, and he went to his pastor and he said, Pastor, guess what? I, 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 I went and I, 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 this is what happened and we have some people that want to come to church. Could you help us out? And so the pastor went and got them a school bus. Next week, next week, the man went out and did the same thing. He went out and got himself another basketball. And he said, all right, I want y'all to put, he went and got two young men and said, I want you to put all the names that want to come to church. As a matter of fact, it was so, it was so amazing that this time around, they had to get two school buses. By the time they finished, they ended up having to get four school buses. But this is the amazing thing about this story. The man that said, I do not speak in public, found himself having to witness to the people on the bus. This is the thing about spiritual gifts. You may start off with one, but if you will use it, God will make sure that one turns to many. Now, I want to, as we turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to see something. And I want you to picture with me quickly a, a rooftop of a house. And I want you to picture a foundation. Now, in this rooftop, beginning with verse 1 of chapter 4, it says, I therefore, I, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. Now, I need you to really understand. Now, remember, this is part of the rooftop, all right? And I need you to understand this. Every believer is called. See, we think that sometimes a calling is only referred to a minister. A minister is called, yes, or an evangelist is called. But every believer, every person that has accepted Jesus Christ, you are called. Don't let anybody tell you that, no, nah, that's not the case, or it's just the past. It's you. The Bible says that you are a royal priesthood. The Bible says a chosen generation. And the Bible tells us here that, uh, that, that to walk worthy of that calling. Well, how are we to walk worthy of that calling? We're still in the rooftop. Verse 2. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in what everybody? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the what? Bound of peace. So in that rooftop, you have you have a calling. And by worthy of that calling, you have lowliness and gentleness and long-suffering and bearing one another with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. That's the rooftop. But what about the foundation of that? Let's go to verse chapter, let's go to the same chapter, but verse starting with verse 29. Notice what it says there in verse 29. The Bible says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your what, everybody? Why is that? Remember the rooftop? Because you are called. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but, that, but what is good for necessary edification? In other words, everything that comes out of our mouth should be to edify one another. It should never be to tear each other down. It should never be to make yourself look better than that other person. It should, it should be to edify one another. 
the Bible says, but what is good and necessary, and let's keep going, that it may impart grace to the, to the hearers. Now notice verse 20, 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. We don't have too much to deal with this, but you know what actually God does with this? It's almost as if God puts a down payment on you. <laughs> well, what is that down payment? Well, God is saying by, the, by my power, by my grace, I am assuring that the ones that I have called, they are going to make it. And then he says, and then the Bible says, let all bitterness... By the way, there's a difference between being angry and being bitter. All right? And it says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now, I, know, I love verse 32. And then it says, be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So the rooftop you have, the calling in which we ought to walk, but the foundation of that is we ought to behave a certain way towards one another. Why? Because we have already been forgiven. See, a lack of forgiveness or a lack, a lack of, of, of a forgiven spirit, what it really says is that we have, although we have already been forgiven, but we have not experienced that forgiveness. And because we have not experienced it, the thing that comes out of our mouth is not reconciliation, but rather, but rather bitterness, corrupt words. What does all this have to do with spiritual gifts? Now, it's interesting because right dead smack in the middle of all this, Paul then speaks of spiritual gifts. In the beginning, he talks about the unity, which stems from the calling for which you and I ought to walk in. And at the end, he talks about um, the type of, of attitude that we ought to have towards one another. But notice now, in the middle now, he starts talking about the spiritual gifts. Now, I, detect that I uh, declare to you today is that the spiritual gifts are a sign that unity in one accord is present among us. Now I want you to see something here quickly. Let's go to verse chapter, let's verse chapter four, but let's go to verse seven. Notice what it says. But to each one of, how many? Grace was given according to the measure of Christ, what everybody? Don't lose that verse. Don't lose this chapter. I want you to go to uh, Ephesians chapter 1, and I want you to see something here in Ephesians chapter 1, and I want you to go to uh, verse 3. Notice what it says. Now, remember, Paul just told us, he just told us while you're looking for it, Paul just said that every one of us, every, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. What is this grace? Let's go to verse, uh, what is it? Verse 3, Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, what everybody? He has what? With how many? All, All what everybody? All spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in who everybody? So in Christ, what have we received? All spiritual blessings. And Paul just said in chapter 4 and verse 7, every one of us grace was given to us according to the measure of Christ's gift. In other words, there is no limit. To the gifts 
that God has bestowed upon us. But how was this gift given? Notice the Bible says, according to the what? Grace. Now, in the New Testament, grace is used two ways. The first one, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, the Bible tells us, for we are saved by what, everybody? God's unmerited favor. But then Paul talks about another aspect of grace. And when he talks about this aspect, it's always mentioned with the power of God. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want you to see this real quick. In verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let's go to verse 10. Notice what he says. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, the Bible says, But by the grace of God, I am what I, what everybody? Now listen, when you start talking about those spiritual gifts, there's a connection here. Notice, grace is connected to our receiving the, these spiritual gifts so that nobody can say, I am this because I have this. See, God does not give the spiritual gifts for us to be puffed up. He does not give us spiritual gifts so that the gifts can make us look good. He does not give us spiritual gifts so that we can look our noses down at others as if we're up there and they're not. God does not give us spiritual gifts for that reason. And I want to declare to you, it is by the grace of God, Paul says, I am what I am. Not that I'm better than all the disciples, he says, but by the grace of God. Paul understood this. And Paul is trying to get us to understand this today, that we are who we are because of the grace of God. It's only by the power of God that you and I are not drug addicts. It's only by the power of God that you and I are not sinners sleeping out there in the streets. It's only by the grace of God that you and I have a home to go to every single day. It's only by God's grace that you and I can use our gifts in the church. It's by the grace and power of God that you and I have the privilege of being able to sing that song that we just heard just a while ago, that sweet and beautiful song that says that he will never leave us. No, he will not ever leave. It is only by God's grace and not by our own doing. Paul says it's by the grace of God. And then he says in verse, uh, da, 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 verse, where are you? Here we go. Theref therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now, what in the world does this mean? Remember when Jesus had resurrected. Were there other people who, were re who had re also resurrected with him? They were proof. Because, you know, I believe that had God not resurrected them, the priest and everybody else would have said the disciples made, well, they were saying that anyway, that the disciples made that stuff up. But this was proof that Jesus had resurrected. Some of them were going, some of them, imagine when they went back out to town and people saw them and they were like, well, wait a minute, didn't you die not too long ago and here you are resurrected? How in the world can you be alive today? And I can imagine that the testimony came back when they said, Jesus has risen again. I believe that the 24 elders that we read about in the book of Revelation are those ones that, G that were resurrected when Christ himself had resurrected. He led captivity captive, the Bible says. Now notice this. Now this, he, uh, verse, 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 verse 9. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? Verse 10. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. What is the all things? Verse 11. And now he goes into this, this thing. When Jesus went up, he gave gifts. Notice this. 
He gave himself, he himself. <laughs> Listen, you didn't get this because you learned this in school. You didn't get this because somebody said, you know what, I think you're going to be a singer someday. The Bible says Jesus himself gave it to you. And the Bible says he himself gave some to be what? Some to be what? Some to be what? And some pastors. Now, before we go on, I need you to understand this about the gifts. Now, I need you to really pay attention to this. God never intended that those whom he called would be spectators in church. See, we treat church like going to the Patriots game, where we go and watch 22 individuals on the field, knock each other's blocks off. And we're in the sidelines, go ahead, man, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. That's how we treat church. But God never intended for church to be that way. Every one of us has been given, given a gift. And I would also declare one of the reasons why we always complain about no unity in the church is because the majority are not utilizing their gift. Now, let me just say this. In case you're afraid to use that gift, I, I remember D.L. Moody says, when God gives you a, a purpose or when he puts a desire in your heart, he himself will also fulfill it. Well, now, Pastor, I don't want to, I can't do that. What you mean you can't? How do you know what you can do and what you can't do? Every time we have nominating committee, now, Pastor, I can't believe they call me. Listen, this is my, you can disagree with me on this, but this is just my take on this. The nominating committee did not vote you. I would hope that the nominating committee is under the, under the auspices of the, of the Holy Ghost and that as they're praying, the Holy Spirit leads them to, um, to choose this person and choose that person. But it's not the church that chooses you. It's the Holy Ghost. It's God that chooses you. You ought to... I, <laughs> I remember, man... I remember somebody did not get to, they were not selected as elder for a year. They were selected to be a deacon. And then when I went to, man, I don't wanna, man, I don't wanna blast them like that. I'll just say when I went to go talk to them, they said, pastor, you can't do that. They said, man, don't you know that that's a demotion? Seriously? Not appreciating the gifts. Listen, I'm a pastor today, but who knows? I might be the one that might be cleaning the church a year from now. But I promise you, every time you walk into that church, Hey, brother, how you doing, man? What is, who are you? Are you the pastor? No, I'm not the pastor. I, 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 am, the, I am the executive administer to the church, and what I do is my job is to make sure that the church is clean, and my job is to make sure that you have a pleasant time in the church. Not only that, the, the gifts were never given to us so that we can formulate cliques. You know, uh, you know, when, you know, when you're in the first year, a lot of things happen and things of that nature. But one of the things that I, you know, I, I love to do is, and I always ask people to do this, is 
when you are in a position, train somebody else to take your place. And you shouldn't be, this is just me, I could be wrong, because human nature has this ego that oftentimes we think that it's mine and it doesn't belong to anybody else. Now, I know you see me up here preaching all the time and things of that nature, but, but don't worry. Folks are going to get their turn. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, I mean, maybe the first year, you know, you know come here and I, and I do that often and things of that nature. But I would be a fool to think that this desk is mine while I have, while God uses these amazing elders that I, we have, these amazing uh, deacons that we have, that they can't do this or they can't do that. No, God has given us this gift in the Bible. And we're going to read it, why the gift, and then we're going to close, okay? So the gifts were not given to us to formulate clicks. It was not given to us to make us shine, to look good, but to give God the glory. And to give God the praise. Now, this is the thing about spiritual gifts. Remember the talents that were given to, um, to the individual? Remember the one person that went and hid his talent? Remember that? And, when, and what happened when the owner came back? What happened to that talent? So this is the thing. Once you discover what your gift is, it's now up to you with God's help to try to, to work it out so that that gift is strengthened. One lady, one time, she was a good singer, made the mistake of saying, hey, you need to have, you, need, you know, you'd be good to get voice lessons. <laughs> Man, who told me to say that? Rita Franklin, we know that she can sing, but even up until her later years in life, she was still doing voice lessons. I mean, what are we doing? We are perfecting, we are owning in that craft. Maybe you might need to take a, a, a lesson here or there. Who cares? I mean, listen, I, I, I'm not telling you to do, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to do something that I have not done. Now, I know I have a long way to go, but I still take a lesson in terms of how to craft my, my messages and, and how to speak to the audience, how to, how to, how to, um, what do you call that? How to connect with people? I'm still trying to do that on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. I could have said, man, I've been doing this now for 19 years. Who cares? I've got it. But every single time, God expects that we work it out. Take a class or something. Do something. But God has given every one of us a gift. Stop telling yourself, well, I can't do this. What do you know you can't do unless you try it? And what I've seen sometimes is that sometimes people see it in you more than you oftentimes see it in yourself. So where you might not see that you are a speaker, but somebody else may see that you are a... I'm always amazed that people will say, Pastor, I can't speak in public. Let them give a testimony. Five minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, I thought you said that you can't speak in public. Why did God give us these gifts? Now, I want you to see this. The Bible says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure, now notice this, to the measure of the what? 
of the statue of the fullness of. So what are these gifts intended for us to do? To come into the fullness of Christ. Now, I know oftentimes when we choose people, now, thank God we don't do it here at Shiloh. But a lot of times we choose people based, and I, and I think there's a place for it, but a lot of times we choose people based on their ability to do a certain thing. But I believe according to this text, we should choose people whose gift is bringing them into that fullness of Christ. Into the fullness of Christ. Our friends, till we all come into the unity of faith, and then notice verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. There would be no deceit or deception if we would utilize our gifts. You wouldn't even need a pastor. To be honest with you, I, you know, for the life of me, I don't know what happens from in our back in our home place, whether it's Jamaica, Trinidad, wherever it is. What happens on the plane? I don't get it. Now, I know in those places we have about 20, some, some pastors have what, 20 churches? Right? Less than that? Six or seven? Okay, some people told me 20. You can stop playing. Listen, three churches is a lot. But some pastors have about, well, I know in Africa they have at least, one, the pastor that I was working with, he had nine churches. And, it's, and I understand that it's, it's different over here than over here, but what happens when we get on the plane to come here? Now, I'm told I could be wrong. If they told us to get on that, <laughs> if they told us to, to come to church at 4 o'clock in the morning and have a prayer service, the church is packed. But some way, somehow, it changes the moment we step on the soils here in the United States. A pastor here was speaking to, to somebody over in India, and a pastor got there and he saw all the difficulties there, and he said, he said, my friend, we over in America are praying for you that God would bless you and give you guys what you guys need of. The man looked at the pastor from America, put his hand on him, and he said, sir, while we appreciate your prayer, but we over here in India are praying for you that God would bring about a revival over in America. Every one of us has a gift. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he gave you a gift. Now, a spiritual gift is different from that of a talent. A talent can become a spiritual gift, but a spiritual gift is a spiritual gift. And God has blessed you with that. As a matter of fact, the Bible also tells us that God has also given you the gift of the Holy Ghost. And while there is one body, there's one spirit, 
all the gifts comes by the Holy Ghost whom God has given to you. So friends, what do I want to say to you right now? What's that song? Um, I pray for you. You pray for me. I need you. I need you to survive. You know that song is true. The toe cannot do without the hand. The eyes cannot do without the ears. And it's time for us to stop degrading one's gift because that gift is not always out in the open. The smallest gift, the smallest gift is just as worthy as the ones that we deem the greatest. You are not a spectator. You are not a spectator. You are not, I want you to say, say, I am not a spectator. God has blessed me with a gift. Now, this is what I believe. How many of you have the gift of teaching? How many of you have the gift of encouragement? How many of you have the gift of administration? All right. How many of you have the gift of buying Pastor Brutus a house? <laughs> now, money. This is my plea to you. With the gift that God has given to us, God does not need you to first try to work it out before you can, before you can act. Well, pastor, I got to get it together before I can do this. I got to make this happen before. God does not expect that from you. And I can be honest with you most of the times because most of the time now I do a lot of reading. And so I'm always reading, not really putting stuff down on paper or whatever the case may be. Last week, I didn't get a chance to, God is so good. If you have a desire to want to work for God, he will use you. He will use you. So let me close with this. There was an old man who could not read nor write. He had been part of a church for years. And people never really turned his way. Not one time did they nominate the brother at all to be, to take a position in the church. But he never let that stop him from coming. He kept on coming. And then one day the church had a business meeting. And they decided that the pastor that they had, they really did not want the pastor anymore. And so the conference sent him someplace else. And the church got together in this business meeting and they made a list to the pastor. This, I mean to the president. This is the kind of pastor we want. We want a pastor who's been pastoring for over 20 years. We want a pastor that has experience. We want a pastor who's married, a pastor who knows how to deal with people. Especially in that church, they have some difficult people. So we want a pastor who's not going to put his, who's going to put his foot down. But we want a pastor who can, who can preach, a pastor that can do all of this. And so they sent that letter out to the conference. That old man that was in the audience that day listening to all of that, he went back home and started praying. The man that could not read, the man that could not write, 
but God had given him a gift. He called one of the elders and he said, Elder, tomorrow I'm going to go to the corner of this street. I want you to color code the doctrines of the church for me. The second coming will be all in red. The state of the dead, all in black. The um, salvation, I can't remember the color he said for that. And then when the elder got ready, the elder called him and said, listen, it's all set. And then he said to the elder, will you come with me? And when I tell you to read a verse, I'm asking you to read the verse. They went down there and they started preaching. Well, he started preaching. Started singing, preaching. And when it got time to study the word, he said to an elder, all right, I want you to start reading all the ones color-coded in red. What is the first verse? And the elder read it, and he would explain it. He said, all right, elder, what's the second one? The elder would read it, he would explain it. And he did this day after day until all the doctrines were preached. This is the good news. The church had waited for about 10, 20 years. Not one soul was one to that church. While they were waiting two weeks, three weeks, while they were waiting a month, God doubled the membership through an individual whom nobody would want to associate with because he couldn't read and he couldn't write. I want to challenge you. What is your gift? Elder Webley, thank you so much, man, for setting, and um, Elder, Elder, uh, Elder um, Oliver, for setting up that, the website. Please, we are challenging you to go to that website. What is that website address? spiritualgift.com spiritualgifts dot no spiritual gift spiritual gift s test okay thank you spiritual gift test s p i Spiritual gifts test. The gift with the S on it. Spiritual gifts test. Right? Dot com. I want you to do that this week. So that we can have that information. Wouldn't it be nice if those of us that were on the nominating committee to have something so that you can actually align people to their gifts and not to where we think they should be God has blessed us with a gift and I believe that God wants to use you as he wants to use me and if you want God to do that in your life and I'm not saying for you to go and perfect it just put one feet out first and you will see what God will do with that gift. Let us bow our heads. And I want you to pray in your hearts as I pray. Our Heavenly Father today, these precious gifts that you have given to us, your people, you have already empowered us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Your gifts were made to equip us, to keep us from believing the lies of the enemy, to edify us, 
to build us up. Father, we are so grateful that you don't require for us to be perfect before we will start. But you do need us to start. And so, Father, today we surrender these gifts that you have given to us. Father, please don't let us Don't let us talk wrong about a gift because that gift is not, doesn't appear to be valuable in our eyes. Every person in this room today is valuable in your sight. You would not have entrusted them with the gifts if you did not deem them valuable. And so, Father, we surrender ourselves to you. And from this day forth, Father, because we have surrendered, we are giving you the permission to use us. And so, Father, we're willing to step out into the waters, to put our feet in the water, believing that the more we put ourselves there, the more you, the more confident that you will make us but that confident will be in Christ. So, Father, glorify your name this morning. Glorify your name. May you receive all the honor and the glory through the gifts that you have given to us. And, Father, as your servant once prayed, May our tongues cleave to the roof of our mouths if any time we take credit for what you have done. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory. In advance, we say thank you for the gifts. Thank you for blessing us. And thank you for using us. In Jesus' name. Please do not forget Bible study today at 4.30. Bible study at 4.30. And now may the congregation please stand for our closing hymn and our benediction.
for a benediction. Um, Elder Anglin would like to see all the men before you leave. We'll meet all the men at the front of the pew before you leave. Amen. And um, just as Pastor shared with us the spiritual gifts, I'm going to ask Elder Webley to get those forms from the clerk's office and just hand it out to the members as they leave. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the message and the messenger. Lord, each one of us are called to the ministry. And you have given us gifts. Some one, some two, some five, some ten. Lord, help us to use it to your name, honor, and glory. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and still doing for us. Thank you for the plans that you have for us in the future. And now, Lord, as we are about to leave this place, but never from your presence, we ask that you will go with us. Bless us, Lord. Bring us back to the appointed time where we can come to worship, to fellowship, in love and in unity. Thank you, Lord, for the um, worship experience today. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. We do pray with thanksgiving. Let the church say amen. 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 Please be seated and just waited as the usher usher you out. <laughs>